my way of breaking out of it was at one point to understand, and I'll start to kind of walk you through the structure of it, to understand that there were only two states of emotional beingness that I could be in at any given point in time. I would either be in a powerful state of being, states like joy, curiosity, excitement, calm, peace, passion, or I would be in a primal state of being, boredom, anger, frustration, some form of fear. I'm always in one of those two states, and I'm never in two states at one time. Now, those map beautifully to the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, right? So in any moment, we're either in fight or flight or we're in rest and relaxation. Through my journey, what I realized was the only cause of that switch to be flipped was my own thinking, the meaning that I was giving the experience. The experience itself wasn't dictating whether I was in a primal state or a powerful state, whether I was in sympathetic fight or flight or parasympathetic rest and, rest, rest and restoration or relaxation. It was the meaning I was giving the experience. And so that meant that all of my personal suffering was within my own control. I needed to start controlling the meaning I was giving the experiences of life. I'm a huge believer in identity driving behaviors. Um, I have a hard time explaining to people though how to yeah. adopt a new identity. How yeah. do you, how have you done it in your own life? I think that's the best. Yeah. I mean, my identity, I mean, obviously this is a, a work in progress, right? Um, I would say that I would start with the, they, they call it the two smallest world words in the English language, but they're the two most powerful words in the English language. It's I am. Right, I am, because whatever you put after that determines your destination or your, your destiny, right? And I think in your identity is who you believe you are. And I feel like when we're talking about playing to the edge of our limits and really playing there and living in that place where we're stretching, you know, I do believe, and I get inspired every time I see your Insta story, you're like, it's like 4.30 and you're working out, you're doing your, your, your work, but that's who you are, right? You don't have to fight it because you can't imagine yourself not doing that. And that's the level of that I, that I think is what's most important. So I would think about going through an exercise, and I've done this with friends. I've had them sit, or in groups, we do these conferences and such, and I find, I, I have people pair up with someone they don't know, and what they're gonna do is, they're gonna do an exercise, I am, and they're gonna talk about, they're literally gonna fill in the blanks for three minutes until I call time. Wow. So you have to go like, and you could do this right now, like if you were to fill in I am blank, like I would say, you know, I am a student, I am a teacher, I am a son, I am a, you know, all this, and right. but eventually I'll get to a point where I don't know what else to say, and that's what the real interesting answers come out of, right? Because it's a great way for networking and knowing somebody else, but it also shows us this really big tapestry of our life to the point that we've gotten to the, right now where we could I relate to these aspects of ourselves. And I think it's a nice exercise when we talk about self-awareness being a superpower, really knowing who we think we are. Because if we don't believe that we are a public speaker or we're a great parent or we're a great learner or a genius, then we'll never be able to reach our full potential because that will always be the ceiling that we bump up against. People have a story, you know, I can't find love because my dad left when I was one. I can't find love because my mom preferred my brother. I can't be a success because I never went to university. I can't speak in public because I blush. And without understanding, when you describe why you can't, you keep it going. If you keep talking about the symptom, your mind keeps it alive because whatever you focus on, you get more of. And so a lot of people have language that's completely irrelevant. Like, yes, I know your dad left when you was one. I know your mother put you up into foster care and didn't love you, but that's, that's then, this is now. And so they have outdated stories, outdated language. They, I can't do that because, uh, the classic one I held, I'm, oh my God, my boyfriend just ripped out my heart, stamped all over it, killed me. And if I find love again, it will kill me. I'm like, darling, he got bored. And you would have got bored too if you'd stuck around. And that was your starter relationship. Go and find a better one with someone amazing. Everything he loved in you, he didn't take it home with him, it's still there. So don't use that irrelevant, I found love and it killed me when it ended. So I found love, the wrong person, but I'm gonna find it again with the right person. It's gonna be amazing and compelling. He's gonna fall in love with my soul. People who've made history, people that have changed the course of history, people that are making the dramatic difference on the planet. If you ask them, what will make you face this kind of heat, this kind of fire? This kind of rejection, if you ask them, they'll tell you, it's worth it for me to do this. They've found their pulse, they've found 
their place. They've found something inside themselves that has given them the strength to face the heat. When other people would become cowards and run away and say, I can't do that. They will step forward and say, I will. I'll take them. You have that in you. You have the capacity to make that happen in your life. That your life is worth whatever effort that you're willing to put forth. Willing to reject the desire to be average. Finishing this book called Average, The Enemy Within. That you know, I don't want to be average. I want to be different. Now what is it that we find that will, that will give us that tenacity, that will give us that courage to stand up? That will give us the strength to, to break habits. That will give us the kind of dedication and determination to come back again and again and again. How do you find that? That stuff. How do you find it? It's worth it when you love it. When you love it. That love will help you bridge a lot of challenges. It will help you handle many obstacles. That, that kind of love that you have within yourself for the things that you do, if it's representing some particular public policy, if it's running a marathon, if it's handling a business, if it's working with the physically handicapped or working without children or wanting to do something to protect the environment, because this is what you said, this, I finally found my piece over here. I, I want to do this and I might catch a lot of heat for it, but it's okay. It's all right. I'm willing to do that. And it will drive you. It will keep you going. Folks will look at you in total amazement. Saying, how could she do that? How could she, where, did, where does the energy come from? I can tell you based upon my own experience that when you get going, when you get rolling, when you can start coming at it again and again and again, even when you feel sometimes that there's just no way there and, and that you wonder where you will get the strength from. You want to give up, you want to fall down, you want to turn around and run with everybody else. You're going to question yourself. You're going to say, is this really making much sense? That's all going to happen to you. That's going to happen to you. In the midst of all this, trying to rebuild my life. Most people judging the young man that I talked with outside who said, I've given up. 20 years of my life. Most people looking at him would say, hey, he's a loser.